Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us on this webinar this morning. Um, as per the invite, you would have noticed that there will be two parts to this webinar. So if you haven't yet registered for the second session, we will just put the link up on our webinar or on the Zoom screen right now for you to see. But um, thank you so much to our two panelists this morning who decided to join us for the session. I really, really appreciate them taking time out of their busy schedules. And I believe they are really busy, especially if you listen to, to some of their bios. With me today is Razan Ursaizen, and she's the founder and the CEO of Profile Me. Um, she's also awarded as a Women in Tech um, finalist for 2023, Women of Stature Awards. So she is such an accomplished designer, a brand strategist, and it's just remarkable that, um, you know, that she actually made some time out of her busy tech schedule, because I believe there's always some glitches and issues that you guys need to solve. So thank you so much, Razan. Profile Me is the market leader, it seems, in its category. And um, I would really urge all our viewers on this call this morning to go and have a look at their website. And then also with me is Tim Slatter, and he's not an unfamiliar face to the Amity Network um, at all. So Tim, so thank you for joining us. Tim is the founder of Slatter Communications and then also Contato. Um, and Tim has helped so many advisors with their websites, building that online presence, their monthly communication. Um, it's just remarkable that the, you know you can have a look at his work and what he's been doing and keeping himself busy with. So thank you to both of you for agreeing to participate this morning. Right, so that's quite a mouthful, and I think we're ready to have this conversation today. And um, as per the invite, it's said it's a bit of a marketing mix angle, but I think why we had it as very broad on the invite is exactly that. Um, I think marketing and all the marketing lingo can become very overwhelming for a lot of people. But whether you are then a, a, an owner of a small business or specifically a owner of a financial advisor practice, I think it's really important that we share some of the thoughts behind what we see in the market, some industry trends. And I wanted to kick off this morning session saying that currently there's about 1.7 billion users on TikTok globally. I'm actually not one of them. Um, I'm still not on the TikTok bandwagon, but it is one of the most popular social media platforms. And TikTok is what we often refer to in the space as short video sharing um, or a short video sharing tool. But now, interestingly, though, is that there are about 900 million LinkedIn members. And though it seems a lot less, LinkedIn consists of about 58 million business accounts. And I think that's quite relevant and something we should consider as we take um, further this discussion this morning. Now, Facebook still remains the most used online social network, and they they currently have 3 billion active users. And then surprisingly, Instagram still has 2 billion active accounts, making it still slightly more attractive than TikTok. Now, why this little intro? Well, I suppose... The two colleagues that I have on here today will really share their thoughts as well on social media. And when you listen to the stats, it does seem that you cannot not have some form of social media presence or some form of a social media account, whether it's in to build your personal brand or even then to be in, known in the business world. So let's maybe then start this morning. And I think I'm just, I'm going to start and say ladies first. So I'm going to give Razan a, a moment here to to firstly maybe talk a bit about the key statistics that highlight the impact of social media marketing in the South African, specifically maybe the South African financial advisory sector. And I mean, Razan, you can even answer this question to go as broad as, you know, what's your thoughts on the social media marketing front for especially financial advisors? Yeah, Tanya, certainly. Um, uh, I think, uh, and I think there's a question coming up later on about being, you know, having a digital footprint. And I the, the answer really is there is no more uh, negotiating negotiations on it. You should have a, a digital presence. Um, and if we look at some of the stats that's coming out, um, every year there's some stats that do come out. And interestingly enough, for South Africa, TikTok's growth actually was 83.6% um, in reach for the South African market, which is by far, it's exponential. We've seen... Um, for the South African market, uh, Facebook and Instagram's reach uh, declined by about 2%. But I think um, looking at just to, to tie into the TikTok trend, we do see that video is definitely, it's, it's been on the app for a couple of years and I, I see mm. it will continue and definitely a short form as well. Um, 
just a couple of stats that I'd like to to to, to lay out there um, in terms of social media. And we often think of social media, um, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, but overall your strategy, anything digital, your website, your your profile me, your blog, all of those things really, it, it, it's a holistic thing. It all ties in. Um, I think one of the pitfalls we see is a lot of focus being put on social media and not enough focus on um, actual intent and um, you know whether it's useful for the brand or for the client where sometimes it's, it's actually not a social media platform it's something else you need completely mm. um, but if we look at the stats overall um, South Africa in the lead uh, highest time spent on the internet in the world um, nine and a half hours round about there so, so a place like the UK would sit around about I think six or five point five four hours something around about there um, South Africa, a new stat that came out is uh, we've got the highest use of search engines in the world. So if there's ever been a time for you to get a digital footprint, it is exactly because of this one, because people are searching. And if they're searching with high intent, they're going to find something that fulfills the need. And if you're not online, they can't find you, but they're going to find somebody else. Um, so I think that really ties into the need to be definitely online. Um, Another one, South Africa, the use of social media for work activities, and that'll be your WhatsApp, social media channels, highest in the world. Um, and this one I really love, uh, online video as a source of learning, highest in the world as well, at about 60.8%, um, with the worldwide median average being at 39.9%. So that's quite a ton of, ton of stats. But in terms of social media, this is where I think we're at. The, the, the overall ecosystem tells us that everybody is online and they're looking for things online, whether they have money to spend or not is debatable, but that's where your, your marketing activities come in. Hmm. Wow, Tim, um, I think I, I want to bring you into this. Maybe um, you can you can either feed on what um, Razan just mentioned here, but also then a stat I didn't mention, but she highlighted now is the use of WhatsApp. Um, so maybe that's, uh, Tim, where you can also just come in here and tell us a bit about the WhatsApp group usage, because it does seem that that's something that has started to pick up quite a bit as well. Now, in a personal opinion, yeah, I think we all hate being on all these WhatsApp groups. Uh, uh, schools have WhatsApp groups. Churches have WhatsApp groups. Everywhere you are part of a network. But the value of those WhatsApp groups, perhaps share some some of what you've picked up and in this advice space, perhaps as well. WhatsApp is a, a fantastic platform, and I think it's greatly underutilized at the moment um, by IFAs from our experience. And I think one of the reasons for that is that it feels like a clumsy piece of technology. Uh, it's great for your personal groups, like you're mentioning, where you're connected to people already. They're in your contact list. Um, it's for stuff outside of work. Um, and the minute it, it starts to encroach on well, I've got a database in this Excel spreadsheet and I've got, you know, something happening there. And how do I marry these two? WhatsApp has traditionally been uh, a frustrating domain for that type of integration. We are seeing a lot more APIs coming out, which is uh, integrated third party apps that are providing dashboard solutions so that you can have one space and lots of people in your team can engage with it. Um, I met someone recently through Razan, actually. Um, and I think both of us are, are starting to engage with them and seeing how we can offer this as a service to financial advisors. It's, it's still quite relatively a, a, an expensive exercise. If you look at your other um, cost per platform um, options and opportunities, but I think one of the reasons why there's a huge gap here is because the other platforms are saturated. And um, in terms of marketing exercises, in terms of uh, getting your brand and your message out there, and what we've always had uh, as our kind of foundational approach is to say, have a multi-pronged approach to your marketing and your PR, because one platform is not going to work for everyone. One type of engagement is not going to work for everyone. I remember speaking um, at an Amity conference, I think it was in 2016, 
And um, my opening pitch was almost exactly what you said now, um, Razan, earlier, is that you can't afford to not be online. Um, and I was saying, you know, it's not about should I be online or shouldn't I be online? It's I am online and I now need to start managing what people find when they come online. And that's why you need to have different avenues because some people will be online through WhatsApp and, and engage through that platform. Some people will prefer emails because it's on their computer and they just feel like I'm in a, a headspace for that. Some people will prefer social media. Um, and for us, we've always kind of spoken to an integrated brand where you've got your website as the cornerstone of your brand. Um, you've got some kind of conversation sparking content. So in a content marketing space, we speak to blogs and newsletters that you've got a social media presence and you've got a direct messaging. One of the elements um, of, because we live in a new social uh, media communication culture, right? We've got to recognize that the communication culture we're living in right now is different to what it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 40 years ago. And inside of a culture, you've got a whole lot of happenings. It's not just a platform or a piece of technology. It's about people expecting immediacy. It's about people expecting transparency and truthfulness. And WhatsApp is an incredible space to show up very quickly, um, to, to answer people's questions, to be available, to provide content. And I think one of the important things with all of the platforms that we might touch on today is consent. Don't force it down people's throats. Don't say, look, we have a WhatsApp channel. You have to subscribe to it. We've got a LinkedIn page. You have to go like it. We've got a Facebook page. You have, you know what I mean? Um, because we do get locked into these initiatives because we spend time and effort and money setting them up. And we're like, well, we have to get people kind of plugged into it. And that's the siloing approach of product just being applied to communication, which the financial planning industry has said, well, we've got to stop doing that. But then we see us ourselves doing it in other areas. And you can't say, well, we've got a WhatsApp, so we've got to plug everyone in. You've got to say, I've got a client. How do they want to hear from us? What is their best way to engage? And WhatsApp is fulfilling that for a lot of people, and it's not being used as extensively as it could. Yeah, I just want to add to that, Tanya. Um, the, the data also shows that 78% of adults want to communicate with brands the same way they communicate with friends and family. Um, and that doesn't only speak to tone, it speaks to that ease and convenience, immediacy, it speaks to all of those things. I would also say, just because there's so many platforms, social media um, out, out there, we see a lot of the resistance of not take, taking up social media or not taking up a digital footprint, it's just because it's so overwhelming. Yes. Um, and just because there's so many doesn't mean you have to be on all of them. I, in fact, totally advocate against, <laughs> against mm. that. If you have to do anything, just pick two, high engagement, high value. That's just, just start there and, and take it from there. Now, well, both of you work with branding and communication. Um, both of you have established amazing brands for yourself as well. But um, let's, let's consider something like tailoring specific content for social media. And I think back to today's of print media many moons ago, and it was newspaper ads, and it was printed leaflets in a doctor's waiting room, and it was an article in a magazine. And is the content different? I mean, we mentioned short form content. We sometimes have this endless scrolling, right, that they start talking about. Um, if you're on Reels, on TikTok and Instagram, you sometimes have three seconds to grab someone's attention with some of the stuff you would like mm. to say. But that's a specific, I would say, type of, of marketing. But Let's look at some maybe practical guidance for the advisors that's on here today. Um, if they start to look at social media, how do we, is there specific stuff that they need to consider? Does social media content look differently to the, the print media content? What would your feedback be on, on this or your answer be for this? Yeah, um, uh, I'm, I'll let Tim go first because I've got a very unpopular view um, okay. <laughs> on this. So I, I started um, in the PR space back in the early noughties when th there was no social media, you know, uh, it, traditional media was, was media. Um, and, you know, even, even the type of publication you went in had a way of writing and a style. Um, and, you know, for me, successful online branding, uh, it, it's got to be connected to uh, we look at the, what we call the three C's. So it's got to be connected to everything is tied into your content, your community, 
um, and connection with that content and with that community. Um, so that speaks to your message. What what are you saying? Um, and you know why are you saying it? Is your connection? So this means something to me. Um, and the who is where are the people sitting? How are they going to get access to this um, this content? Um, so when you go um, to a different platform, there's going to be algorithmic um, considerations. Obviously, every platform has a different way of distributing content and uh, validating what they feel is important. But the general kind of rule is creating stuff that people want to engage with, creating stuff that people can quickly connect with, give a like, give a comment, uh, give some feedback to you. Then the algorithms go, okay, cool, this is valuable content, so we're going to share it more. Um, so if you are on a platform that is video-centric, you obviously want to be creating video content. If you're on a platform that is more for podcasts, you're going to create longer video content, probably do something like we've got here, where you've got different faces, voices, and opinions, because if you want to do a podcast for more than five minutes, it, it's going to be incredibly boring if it's just one person. Um, you know, that person's got to be very, very interesting, very topical to hold the interest. Um, so then you'd have different opinions. If you're writing um, a blog for your website, you can get away with it being a lot shorter um, and very much around your opinion and your approach to things. If you're writing an article, even if it's online or offline for a, a publication like the Blue Chip Journal or City Wire or uh, something like that, then you're probably going to want to have a little bit more technical information, some stats to back up what you're saying, because you want to now make it slightly longer. Um, and when I talk about shorter content, um, written content for blogs, I'm talking about 300 to 400 words. Um, when we're talking about longer articles, we're saying kind of like 800 to 1,000 words. And that, from a traditional sense, is really short still. Uh, in a traditional sense, articles were probably two to 3,000 words. And and that helps you kind of gauge, okay, what am I going to create today? And, and I think a long time ago, I remember having, I'm sure it was with you, uh, Tanya, a, con a conversation around taking a long blog that was about 1,500 words and saying, you can you can break this into three blogs of 500 words each and then distribute it. And that distribution also adds immense value when you're on social media platforms because posting once a month or once every night, now and then, your network's never going to see it. You actually need to be posting daily, if not multiple times per day, because the algorithms break it up. And you don't have to fear that, oh, my network's going to see every single post from me all the time. Um, the algorithms don't do that anymore because they know that then people start to unfollow and reduce the feed. So if you're not posting regularly enough and appropriately for that platform, you're not going to be seen. Does that answer some of the question? Yes. Are you ready for Razan's unpopular opinion? Yes, let's go, Razan. <laughs> yeah, um, so I definitely agree on the fact that, um, you know, high value, that's something like a long form. Um, it's going to be, let's take the example of a blog. It's going to be your blog. Then you've got to take it and you've got to convert that into high engagement. So in a, in a typical example, what, what I would say is time efficient, cost efficient, et cetera, is say you have the blog. Um, and you might have gotten it from a product provider. It might be an article on the news. It might be somewhere. Always quote your source, obviously. Um, but you can get a, a piece of content, which you can then, and it's very easy to just write a little blurb for it, um, something short enough to be a WhatsApp broadcast message. Um, you can actually put that, that blog step, entire blog through ChatGPT and say, write me a very short WhatsApp message about this, and you have now a piece of short form content, what you're gonna need with that is creative. So you're gonna need, um, whether it's a video or whether it's an image, you're gonna need that. But if you've got those, just those two elements, then you can tackle the platforms from there. If I had no budget and no time, what I would do is just the minimum of that, get that blog, make a short form from it, and I will do a WhatsApp broadcast. I will take that exact same WhatsApp broadcast with my image and my, my short form text, and I will put that on my social media channel of choice. Um, I'm not gonna be on all of them because I don't have time for them as I, in this use case, as I mentioned. So I'm gonna put it on that one channel. Um, I'm also gonna take that image and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on my WhatsApp status. 
And then the longer form I'm going to use on uh, something like LinkedIn, I'm going to publish it as an article there, as well as publishing it on my website. In my social media, oh, in, in the social media feeds that I'm putting out or posts, um, I would uh, say, um, and in the WhatsApp broadcast or WhatsApp channel, wherever you're putting it, make sure to mention that there is this article to go and look at, or there is this long form video, whatever it be. There is this other thing that they need to, to, to go and look, look at. So I would you do it that way. And then I would probably also chat GPT, just create three different uh, perspectives for the same thing. So I've got three or four different social media posts, which I can then schedule throughout a, a period of a week or, or a day. That would be my advice. Both of you mentioned the algorithm, but let's just, just define what's this algorithm, because I think that's quite important to know. I mean, sometimes we feel it's like this fluffy thing, something in the cloud. We, we don't know what it is. One of, one of you can maybe just elaborate. What is the algorithm that you refer to? Tim? I was going to say, resign. How do you explain an algorithm? Um, so I'm not a, a tech guru. I'm, I'm creative and I'm a content creator. And the way I understand the algorithm is it's basically the metric or the matrix um, that underscores the way content is distributed on a platform. And it's, you know, if you have worked with ChatGPT, as Razan's mentioned a few times now, it's almost like a prompt you would give ChatGPT. Uh, but the algorithm is going to say, look out for these specific markers. And if it has these markers, then do this. So it's like a script or a program that runs, basically. Um, and almost like macros, if you back in the old days, yeah. old days of running stuff through uh, Excel. Yeah. Exactly. It's the same kind of thing. Um, so, but it's, it's, it's much longer, it's much more advanced. It, it utilizes languages that most of us don't even understand or have heard of. Um, and it, it will look at markers like, um, consistency, you know, how often has this person posted? Um, how often do those posts get engaged with? What type of people do they get engaged with? It also looks at how often is this person engaging with other people's content? Who are they engaging with? How are they engaging? Is it likes? Is it comments? Is it shares? Is it messages through um, the inbox system of that platform? And all of those, the more frequently you can engage with that variety, um, contribute to a positive response from the algorithm. And the less you do any of that, or the more you're focusing just on one tiny element of that, the algorithm is going to either mark you as spammy and go, this person's just here to, to get their message out, they're not really contributing to fairness and conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why we bring it back to at the, the heart of our strategy. You know, often before we dive into these things, we say, listen, we've got to take a step back and go, what's our strategy first? And it's to say, we want to be conversational because people like mm -hmm. to talk to people. Um, yeah. and, and you can get locked into the algorithmic conversation and concepts like SEO, which is search engine yes. optimization. And the challenge with that is that people start to build platforms and identities that are built for robots and algorithms, not that are built for people. And you've got to try and find that balance. And the algorithms are improving all the time. And in my experience, the more people-centric you can be, the more the algorithms start to like you. Yeah. I do I, I do want to add to that, that, um, I mean, we, we must remember against every algorithm, it's built so that they can run ads. We, we just don't don't forget that it is so that that platform can, can make money yes, and the more sensational true. that is the better and if you're a brand like a, a, a big bank or a pick and pay then for sure then 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 all of these very very hectic high level digital marketing strategies come into play but if you're a ifa or a financial advisor in a practice of no more than 10 or five people even i would even go up to 50 400 even, um, what you say to the clients are, are much, much more important. It really isn't about, um, you know, getting the algorithm down pat. And in fact, mm. we've worked with brands where we did try and beat the algorithm, but a lot of the time, the type of, of, of tone that the, the, the client has or financial advice in, in general just does not do well. Mm. It's, um, it's, it's got some stuff to say about Facebook, 
but just that does not do well on certain things. What is much, much important is the quality of the relationship that you have with your client. Because that client, if they are on that platform, you've got a quality relationship, they by default, they are going to support you and they are going to like, um, mm. a, a like what you've got to say. I'm actually glad that you mentioned it because it brings it back to the authenticity of, I suppose, your content. And I read the other day an article saying that Generation Z and actually generations after that will be more prone to follow people with authentic content. And they, they deliberately mm -hmm. go and find those. And it's it's almost counterintuitive because they are also mostly the generation that follow influencers. But yet they are they tend mm. to follow people with authentic type of content and i and i i'm actually appreciate the the fact that you mentioned that if you only go with seo or find those strategies or then any algorithm you know trying to beat the algorithm i suppose you can lose a bit of that authentic mm. um authenticity mm. there but th i'm also glad you mentioned the strategy part because i think i deliberately kind of skipped the strategy to show people how often we skip the strategy because we always just go into selecting which which platforms we want to use mm. um you know we tend to jump right into the design the video content um paying ads um you know all those things that not it's not necessarily meant for your business or ideal for your business rather so i mean i've seen advisors saying that um word of mouth is enough for them they meet up on a golf course they are part of a networking group uh, maybe the business chambers or they sponsor school events and that's where they get their leads and they're very happy with with that so you get that mm. type of, of person, I suppose. But let's say pause and rewind and say that before you even then decide on whether you should just go the route of a golf course meeting or the route of now starting to sponsor um, a school or being on the radio or being on television, what should your digital marketing strategy or even your just your plain, simple, traditional marketing strategy look like and i know that's almost a, a a webinar on its own that you can have on marketing strategies but the gist of it what's the very first step that someone and let's build a persona here a financial advisor a single one-man business and he wants to build his his brand and he starts with the marketing strategy what's almost that first thing that he should consider contact him <laughs> It's yeah, look, it is a space we, we often work in. Um and I like to use the the five W's and the H um setup, uh, where you've got the who, what, when, where, why, and how, which a lot of people are familiar with it with um when it comes to formulating a strategy. And and I say to our guys, don't look at it first of all, don't look at it as linear, look at it as two circles um that are interrelating all the time. And the first one we want to look at is the who, the what. Um, and the why, which lines up with our three C's, our connection, community, and content. Um, and the, the reason why it's cyclical is, is because it's each one influences the other. And, you'll, and you just jump in anyway, so you don't have to start off with, well, well, who's my target audience? And I think that's a big stumbling block for a lot of people is they've heard this word niche, niche, niche. And I was like, well, you know, right now my business is starting out. I don't know who I'm going to work with, et cetera. Um, and and that really then holds them back. So being able to to jump into the why um, or the what helps you straight off the bat. And you start with what, where you are right now. In the same way, you would do a six step plan for your clients, the, the, the six step financial planning journey, where we want to kind of discover where are we right now, what does the situation look like, uh, what messages are in your head already. So um, you, you put those down on the paper. So whatever it might be. Um, I'm here to give you financial security. And I do this by selling life cover, for example. Um, and then you look at that and you go, does that resonate with me? Is this what I'm doing? Is this what I want to do? If it is, great. Then you start working on that. If not, you go, well, then how can I word that better? How can I, I go deeper? Um, there's another strategy that I heard of a while back that I believe started in um, Toyota's factories in Japan, which is the five whys. And if something broke, they would ask a minimum of five questions, as why, five times, why did that break? Who was working on it? What was the environment? Okay, why was that the environment? Why were those people working on it? And then take it from there. So, so as you then analyze these three areas in your who, what, and why, you ask why for each of those. Why is that my message? Why is that my motivation? Why is that the, the type of person I'm wanting to speak to? And then that helps you understand more of your own value proposition and how you make a difference in people's lives. 
And this is before we even look at platforms, uh, because platforms are um, the where, the how, and the when. How frequently am I going to post? Where am I going to post? Um, and that all kind of falls into place a lot more easily when you've got, well, who do I want to speak to? Because if my audience are playing golf and that's all they ever do and they never leave the golf course, then that's where you go. Um, but you might go, but the guys I'm playing golf with or the ladies I'm playing golf with might go home and speak to their spouse about me and say, oh, we need to meet with Tim. Okay, great. Let's Google him. Let's check him out online. What does he do? And then you need an online brand. Or you might be there and they might go, how can we connect? So you can go, oh, we'll check out my cool profile, me business card. And then you share your business card with them. Um, then they go to your website, and but then they want to see, is there a history? Uh, do you have testimonials? Do you have blogs? Do you have a newsletter? Do you have a social media profile? Because everyone nowadays stalks everyone. We hop on, we want to see photos, we want to see history, we want to see who you know. And the more points of connection along that journey, we start to build a journey of getting to know, like, and trust. Um, and that, that for me is the foundation of a communication strategy or a marketing strategy where you can build something that's authentic, authoritative, um, and sustainable. Yeah. And you know what's, what's interesting, what I've seen with people that, that get stuck often, and even if they've, they've, they've looked at different positionings type things, it's just if they go for their professional photos and they work with a good photographer that understands how they want to portray them, themselves and what kind of environments. I always suggest get, get photos of you in action as well. I want to, If I'm online, I want to see what it's like to have a meeting with you. In fact, I want to mm. smell the coffee in that meeting, you know, sitting with you at a table or whether your, your, your vibes, are, you know, outdoors, I've, I can't think of an example now, but whatever it is, you know, I, mm. I want to I, I want to experience that through the through the visuals. So, and what I see with a lot of people, it's only once they really properly do that exercise do they realize, oh well, this is what I want to look like to my clients and the world, and then they start to be be able to 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 better get into well, for, for these are the people that that would be attractive for, or these are the t people that I'm thinking about when I think about mm. this image that I that I port portray. So. It is definitely a point where people get stuck on. Um, but the sooner you get it done, the sooner you can actually start building. Um, I mean, we, so you and I would have both seen practices that are 10 years down the line, you know, that, that is redoing that exercise again or doing it for the first time. And you really want to get that down, down pat as, um, as soon as possible. Uh, when Tom and I had a, had a, a conversation as well, um, the big thing about what you've got to think about what you're doing, and Tom spoke about uh, niching, is, you know, what is the problem that I'm solving? You see, mm. the thing is not that you are, uh, um, uh, the problem is not that somebody needs life insurance. The problem is that somebody is going to die. That's mm. the problem. <laughs> so mm. um, you've got to really think about the problems that you solve and who you can solve it for. And obviously how you can build a business out of that. Mm. And then think, how are you gonna communicate that? Yeah. I think that is a brilliant end of our first session for, um, for this two part webinar series that we're hosting. So thank you so much to our panelists on this call. Um, we urge everyone to ensure that they um, get onto that link, register for the follow-up session. You do not wanna miss our Con conversation that we will be continuing. Um, so thank you again for the two panelists this morning. Thank you for having us. Thank you.